What's going on everybody? This is Eric Malave. Welcome to episode 3 of the Eastern Fighter. So, like I've been telling you guys, I do all this heavy list fighting and stuff. For those of you who don't know what the SEA is, it's the Society for Creative Anachronism. Basically what we do is we take a different time period, which we aren't a part of, and we basically represent it in modern time. So once again for us, it's the medieval ages from 600 AD all the way up to 1600 AD. So, um, these videos that I'm going to begin making are going to be a personal journey from just starting out in the SEA as a fighter all the way up to wherever it takes me. So, hopefully this will be very informative for the new fighter and for the seasoned fighter alike. So, what I'm going to start off with on episode 3 is the basic armor kit. Okay, so I'm going to run through very briefly the basic armor kit for an SEA heavy list fighter. All right, so right here we have my shovel greaves. I have one for each leg. I'm going to show you how those go on. This right here is my personal thigh protection. I have it hanging on this belt here. Naturally, everybody has to have some form of um, athletic supporter, some kind of jock shop cup. Um, this is known as a gorget. These gorgets go around your neck for protection. I have... I usually fight sword and shield, so I usually use a hockey glove right here for my left hand. And then for my right hand, I have my demi gauntlet. I have my bracers. These are my elbow cops here. <clears throat> we have my absolutely sexy helmet. All right. So this is my curious. This is my chest, my back. I made this myself. And, uh,. I put these shoulder pieces on, which I'm actually thinking about taking off this part here and just leaving the shoulder cup for the top. And naturally, no three skull fighter could be complete without their standard tabard. I have my tunic underneath here, and this is the belt that I black belt that I wear with the favor of the Southern Region Army. Now it's time to try right, this so stuff on. Actually, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put on my jock strap here. A lot of guys will wear this underneath their stuff. It doesn't really matter. As long as it's covering the kids, that's all that matters, right? So I got the jock strap on here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hang my thighs. Oh, and by the way, again, once again, you're looking for a jock strap. www.nuttybuddy.com. That's www.nuttybuddy.com. All right. So next are these leg guards that I created. Just so you guys know, for those of you who are just starting, these legs I made out of those plastic rain barrels that you find. You can find them at car washes, uh, pretty much anywhere. Um, a lot of barn shops, I know I live in the country here, so we have a whole lot of farms by here. They sell these as feed barrels. So yeah, basically I took it, carved out what I needed with the jigsaw and heat treated it. If you guys are interested, I will post up a video all about making plastic armor just go down to the comment box below and let me know that you guys are interested in me actually making a video like that so here are my basic legs and let me tell you what these things are brilliant they're really low key so they'll fit underneath my pants that you'll see I'm gonna wear over top of these cuz for the look that I go for I try to make it look as if I, I don't wear armor. But naturally, you have to do all the SEA minimal requirements to fight onto the battlefield. All right, this guy came loose, but it's okay because the strap right here, I created with parachute cord. You can find this at any army surplus store, or you can even find them online, just look for parachute cord. So these are my thigh protection, my cup protection. So you see already, I have a whole lot of coverage here. I really do want to put the heat gun to them more and form it out a little better, but these are absolutely perfect. I've been using these for the past year, 
flawlessly. All right, what's next? All right. <clears throat> now, I personally just cover up this whole look with my fighter's pants. Ooh. Almost made the blooper reel there. All right. So you could use basically any style clothing you want. Um, these, this was spe uh, specific outfit, excuse me, that I'm using right now, it doesn't really hold any period value. It's just something that I feel absolutely comfortable fighting in. Um, but once again, I'm gonna start building more and more of my um, Sassanid or Caliphate armor. So I'll keep you guys posted on how all that goes. All right. So I got these all ready to go. I could do it like this. Or what I like to do because I'm fighting is I'll bring it down like here. Because the next thing I'm putting on are my shovel greaves. <clears throat> these shovel greaves were made for me by Elam of House Three of uh, excuse me House Three Skulls of uh, Tears Thalor. So big shout out to everybody uh, on the islands who represent Tear Thalor. <clears throat> They're the guys that throw the end of the world party at Pentic as well. Uh, usually the last week, last camp standing kind of deal. <clears throat> All right, so with these shovel greaves, they actually provide really nice ankle support as well as giving me all the necessary protection that I need. I didn't really mention this prior, but with these shovel greaves, when you bend your knee, you actually notice that the shovel greave comes up and there's an open spot right here. Now, a lot of marshals obviously aren't gonna like this because that's an open spot. So the way I counteract this is underneath everything, I wear a knee brace that, or a knee pad that's actually holding a fairly thick piece of leather inside. So when you're down on your knees or your leg happens to bend like this when you're running into a charge or anything of that nature, and you're gonna take a shot right here to the top of your kneecap, it's well protected. I know they sell knee pieces that actually connect to the thighs if you can get your hands on those, that's great. But for those of you who actually like the style of these guys here, then note that you're gonna need to do something a little more as far as protection is concerned. Uh, these were once again made out of plastic. To me, the benefit of wearing plastic is how light they are. Um, but, I am a stickler for looks and period, so I will be getting metal shovel greaves in the near future. So if you're actually interested in this specific pair, shortly I'll probably be selling the entire armor kit that this came with. This actually came with the whole Japanese armor kit. <laughs> you know, uh, a lot of people recognized me from that armor kit, but uh, I just recently changed to this. So yeah, that's how these look. So basically, uh, like I said, the shins are protected, the ankles protected, the knees well protected until you're obviously making a gesture like this here when you're in the midst of running. That's when the real issue happens. So be sure to wear something underneath there. Moving forward, we got the main piece of the arsenal once again. <clears throat> Is your curse. Let's see if I can do this by myself without looking like a total ass. Strike one. Uh, let's see what I can do here. Every good man has a better woman behind him. Usually my lovely lady is the one who helps me with all of this. So, I know all you fighters out there who have their ladies helping them. know what I'm talking about <laughs> and I'm totally not ashamed to say that my gorgeous lady is the one who helps me put on my armor without a doubt but yeah 
So, essentially, this is how it goes on.